calling the Health and Human Services 1 p.m. calendar. Um, present with me is Vice Chair Senator Henry Aquino, and others that will be participating remotely are um, members, are other members of the committee. This meeting is being streamed live on YouTube in the unlikely event that we have to abruptly end this hearing due to technical difficulties. The committee will reconvene to discuss any outstanding business at 1 p.m. Wednesday, February 15th, room 225 in video conference and via video conference. For those on video conference, your audio will be muted and video disabled until shortly before it's your turn to testify. Each testify will have one minute to testify. If there's a technical glitch during your time to testify, we may have to move on to the next person due to time constraints. I will be reading a list of individuals who submitted written testimony for each measure. We apologize if the closed captioning does not accurately transcribe the names. If you are interested in re reviewing the written testimony, please go to the legislator's website. You will find the link on the status page for the measure. We appreciate your understanding and remind you that the committee does have your testimony, that I reviewed them, so I encourage you to use your time to either add additional com comments or stand on your written testimony or be present during for questioning. Okay, first up, SB 144, relating to compacts of free association. First up, we have State Council on Developmental Dis Disabilities and Support. Uh, Aloha Chair and Vice Chair, my name is Annabelle Doherty. I'm the intern here on behalf of the Council, and we'd like to stand our testimony and support. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Next up is Department of Human Services providing comments. Anybody else uh, wishing? Oh, oh, Judge. Uh, we see Emma Rand, Executive Committee on Human Services, and Dr. Betts. We see Emma Rand, written testimony, we uh, offer comments. Uh, we Okay, Judy, if you're going to talk more than that, you need to be on in front of the mic. We respectfully request that it be heard. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, um, next up. Anybody else wishing to testify on SB 144? Questions, members, seeing none, moving on to SB 318. First up, we have State Council on Developmental Disabilities and Support. Uh, thank you, Chair. Ms. Aaron, ready to testify. Okay, thank you. Next up, Department of Human Services providing comments. Hi. Hey, uh, Thank you. Okay, next up, Department of Health providing comments. Okay, Mr. Kim. Dr. Kim. Mr. My cousin's a physician. Okay, thank you. Thank you for that, Doug. Uh, we're submitting comments, part of the late testimony. Um, the department, uh, we provided in our testimony a report, that, a paper that the department published in 2009. I have more hard copies here if you, if you uh, need it, we view it, um, which makes very specific recommendations on how to jumpstart some community activities on FASD. And uh, since there already is an appropriation to SB 318, we would rather see uh, funds directed to actually uh, procure these services, finding a willing partner in the private sector to do it. And then we see what happens and we evaluate after there for subsequent um, um, follow-up. So uh, we are requesting that um, the, uh, this measure be amended quite sub uh, substantially into a procurement uh, to implement the um, ideas and the framework laid out in our report from 2009. Okay, thank, thank you, you very much. Okay, next up we have Department of um, the I see Daryl and Scoville providing support. Yes, all the time. FASD Action Group, please Good proceed. Good afternoon, uh, Chair uh, Sangvina Bindura, Vice Chair um, Senator Henry Aquino. Again, uh, my name is Darlene Chen Scoville. I, um, I am actually a volunteer advocate for fetal alcohol spectrum disorder children and families. Uh, this is clouded by so much stigma for the mothers and there is no mothers that will be coming forward to voice and fight for their children. So I am here for the children and the mothers that cannot be here. Um, 
This task force is, will allow us to have data uh, and some type of services to recognize them. I have been with the Developmental Disability Act Center. They do not consider them this it's a disability because their IQ appears normal. And it is not only nationally being recognized as a problem now, it's globally. So I think we should uh, now, really if this is the time to address it, actually many, many years ago, but these are the children who are, are labeled troubled children in the school systems, and they are the, uh, they're, they're, they are the juveniles, we offenders, because they do not have concept of the percussions or the sequence in their thought process. So please, I urge you to pass this. Okay, so you. thank you very thank much. You. Okay, thank you. Okay. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, next up, we have Hawaii Disability Rights Center in support. I see Louis Urchuk there. Yes, thank you. I, uh, I'm trying to start the video, but apparently uh, the host won't allow it. I'm not sure why, so I can I can certainly speak. Uh, if you turn it, turn the video on, you'll see me. If not, you can hear me. Anyway, Senator, mm -hmm. I think it's really about time that we did something about uh, about fetal alcohol spectrum disorder. Uh, this has been going on. I was looking at my testimony from 2014 and we were talking about the same stuff. The department used to have a, co a full-time coordinator and that person retired. They never refunded the position. In the meantime, these kids fall into a huge gap group. Uh, they don't necessarily qualify for mental health services or DD services. The efforts to just do prevention where you, posting signs in a bar like don't drink or things like that. I mean, I guess that's better than nothing, but it doesn't really solve the problem. There's a lot of kids being born that need services. They're not getting services. And the task force would at least be a way to formalize that, bring people together, figure out what we need and so forth. So I really hope you'll keep the bill moving. Thank you. Hey, thank you very much. Um, I'm gonna keep going, but if witnesses are going to be testifying, I'm going to tell you what I am inclined to do, which is basically accept the Department of Health's recommendation, which is to go beyond the task force and actually do something about it. So please um, support and three other individuals in support. Any, okay, come on up, Angela, you have one minute. Aloha, Kayaka, Chair, Vice Chair, and the committee. My name is Angela, testifying on behalf of CARES in strong support. Um, and so the, uh, the purpose of the act is to implement a task force to study um, this condition. And according um, to some of the disability rights advocates, um, this sort of disability um, qualifies for social security um, benefits. And so um, oftentimes people think, and these are the reasons why we should support the task force is because people have a stigmatized perspective about disabilities. Um, maybe that disabled people are not worthy or like stupid or, um, you know, not positive contributors to society. But the thing is, it's because the research and the studies haven't been okay. developed. So, so therefore, sorry, yeah, hence we support thank the you. Um, task force to study. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Anybody else wishing to testify on SB 318? Okay, members, any questions? Okay, so Daryl and Scoville, why don't you come up? I have a question. Every year I see you, yes. every year we try to do something about it. Yes, this time, this time the Department of Health says we should do something about it instead of just talking about it. So what do you think? We do the pilot project the Department of Health says? I think we should, it's time. It's okay. really time. Like I said, I am, I am a full-time worker. I work full-time. I'm a doctoral student, but I have been fighting for this population only because if their mother cannot come forward, who would? Okay, thank, thank you. you very much. Okay, anybody else? Um, any other questions? Okay, moving on. SB 602, first up, we have Board of Fire Mercy in support. Hello, Director, this time I'm going to be available for questions. 
Okay, thank you very much. Next up, we have um, Walgreens in support. Okay, I guess they're not here, Mihoko Ito. Next up, we have Hawaii Pharmacists Association in support. Same. We stand on our written testimony in support. Thank you. Next up, we have University of Hawaii in support, Times Pharmacy in support, Clinical Labs of Hawaii in opposition, and two other individuals in support. Anybody else wishing to testify on SB 602 relating to practice of pharmacy? Okay, seeing none, members, any questions? Okay, moving on, SB 677. First up, we have Board of Psychology in support. This is SB 677, um, Dr. Christopher Fernandez, Okay, moving on, Illinois Psychology Association in support. Oh, I see Christopher Fernandez, please proceed, you have one minute. Thank you, Chair. Um, I'm here on behalf of the board. Uh, the board supports this bill and offers comments. Okay, thank you very much. Next up, we have Illinois Psychology Association, Dr. Derek Phillips in support. You have one minute, Dr. Phillips. Uh, <clears throat> Thank you, Chair and committee members. Um, I'm Dr. Derek Phillips. On behalf of the Illinois Psychological Association and its 1,200 members, I'd like to support SB 677. Uh, I myself am a licensed prescribing psychologist in Illinois, um, and uh, I, I work and live in a very rural, um, uh, federally um, mental health shortage area here in downstate Illinois, not in Chicago in the city. Um, I just want to uh, be able to speak, obviously, very briefly to um, how well um, prescribing psychology is working in Illinois and um, specifically for me working with other providers, with psychiatrists and, um, you know, it, increasing, obviously, access to care for the patients. I also want to say that I'm the director of one of the six uh, training programs in the country for prescribing psychologists and would be happy to answer any questions you may have about the training. Thank you very much. Okay, next up we have American Psychological Association Services Inc. and in support, Iowa Psychological Association and support, and we have Illinois Association of Prescribing Psychologists and support. Are you there, um, Beth Rom Reimer, Dr. Rom Reimer? Okay, moving yes. on. Oh, yes, please proceed. You yes, have one I am. Yes, I am. Good. Good evening. Good. Good afternoon, Chair Sun, Buena Ventura, and members of the Senate Health and Human Services Committee. My name is Dr. Beth Rom Reimer. I'm an Illinois licensed clinical psychologist, and I'm a nationally consulting forensic psychologist. I have been an Illinois national and international leader of prescriptive authority since 2004. In Illinois, he was my psychologist team that was responsible for passing the Illinois Prescriptive Authority legislation in 2014. And my organization, the Illinois Prescriptive Authority Association, um, we, that we continue to implement and amend our statute to ever broaden prescribing psychologists prescriptive authority. We now have 14 <laughs> Illinois licensed psychologist prescribers with over 150 psychologists in training to become licensed prescribers. Although the Illinois Psychiatric Society and the Illinois Medical Society initially opposed our legislation, they did remove their opposition to our bill so that it passed in May 2014, followed by the signature of our governor in June of 2014. Since that time, we've had overwhelming support from the Thank you very much. I, I, have, have, I, I have a time certain. I make sure everyone goes within their one minute. You can give me as much written testimony as you want. You should see how much I read, so please limit it to one minute. Thank, Thank you, you so much for voting yes. Uh, we haven't voted yet. <laughs> okay, so moving on. Dr. Shearer, so Society for Prescribing Psychology and Support. Dr. Shearer, are you present? Okay, moving on. Yes, um, yes, I'm present. Okay, please proceed. You have one minute. Okay, I can't turn on my video. It's okay, we can hear you and we have your written testimony. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Uh, and members of the committee, my name is Dr. David Shear, and I am a prescribing psychologist. I'm here to support uh, SB 677. For the past 14 years, I've been a prescribing psychologist embedded in a large family practice uh, at Joint Base Lewis McCord in Washington State. I've written over 15,000 prescriptions in my time with the Department of Defense. 
I'm here to tell you that prescribing psychology is safe, that we have medical training, that we have two years degree in psychopharmacology, and that there is no evidence that prescribing psychologists do harm at all, none, zero, after 30 years. Um, I've worked for 14 years with dozens of medical doctors who trust me to prescribe to their patients and find me to be value added. This is not a solution for the distant future. For why? It's a solution that can come to fruition very quickly and start to help your citizens right away. Please support Senate Bill 677 and bring this improved access to psychiatric care to your community. I'd be happy to answer your questions. Thank you very much, Dr. Shearer. Next up, we have Dr. Folan, Hawaii Psychological Association in support. Dr. Folan, are you present? Okay, we're moving on to the next one. Hawaii Association of Prof Professional Nurses in opposition, Bradley Kulo, are you present? Please proceed. Yes, Chair, I'm here. Um, the Good afternoon, uh, committee. Uh, my name is Bradley Kuo uh, with Hawaii Association of Professional Nurses. Uh, at this time, our main concern with this bill is specifically related to uh, the edu educational training uh, as well as the supervision uh, 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 noted he here within. Uh, the state of Hawaii has several psychologists who are also APRNs. Uh, we welcome them very much uh, into our community of APRNs, uh, and we feel like uh, some type of pathway with either nursing or uh, medical uh, is the most appropriate training pathway. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, next up we have um, Dr. Kapona Chong Hansen in opposition. We have Vanessa Freitas, Karlama Kukui in opposition. Hawaii Psychiatric Medical Association in opposition. Jennifer Lyman, are you on Zoom? Please proceed, you have one minute. Good afternoon, Chair, Vice President of the Committee. My name is Dr. Jennifer Lyman. I'm one of the Chief Psychiatry Residents training here in Hawaii, and I'm one of the HPMA Psychiatry Legislative Co-Chairs. Thank you so much for giving us the opportunity to testify and for caring about this issue. My testimony on behalf of HPMA is in front of you, although I'd like to highlight several points, including that complicated medical illnesses can be disguised as psychiatric illness. For example, NMDA receptor encephalitis can present as psychosis. Life-threatening catatonia can be mistaken as depression. I've seen both of these two things just in my past week on Lifeboat. We see this as a patient safety issue, and we would love to work with you to consider alternatives to safely expanding mental health care. I'm happy to answer any questions, and thank you so much for allowing me the opportunity to testify this afternoon. We deeply care about the mental health of our community. Hey, thank you very much. Next up, we have Hawaii Medical Association in opposition. Dr. Elizabeth England, please proceed. Good afternoon, Chair, Vice Chair, and members of the committee. My name is Dr. Beth England. I'm co-chair of the Public Policy Committee for the Hawaii Medical Association. We stand on our written testimony in opposition and are available for any questions. Thank you. Hey, thank you very much. Next, we have WPC Inc., Anna War Maria, Wager Skorupa in support. Next, we have INET Med RX2, Joe Velasquez in support. Judy Steinman, are you present? Okay, if you're not, we're going to move on. I am here. Okay, you have one minute, Judith. Aloha. I, uh, here, let me start my video. I am here. Well, hey, please proceed. We can see no, you. No, can I, hear you. You can you can hear and see. It doesn't matter. I am here. I just want to say we have been at this for um, many years. I want to say let's do this. Let's make this move forward. I know that there are people who are opposed to us. I would like to point out that the Hawaii bill does include APRNs as part of our training. We all of our programs have nurse practitioners. As part of our training, our students are trained in physical assessment, drug drug interactions, contraindications. Our students are trained. We do know about every organ system in the body. And so anybody that says otherwise, please let's discuss that. I want to support everybody who's here today. We have representatives from all the different states that now have legislation passed. We could be on that list. Let's do this. Let's do it now. I yield my time. Thank you. 
Okay, we don't have much time left, but let's move on. Good. Good. Ten seconds. I just say a lot. Okay, you have one minute. Um, Cecilia Gay, in support. Can you hear me? Yes, and we can see you. I'm Dr. Cecilia Gay. I'm originally from American Samoa. I was trained in Hawaii at the Hawaii uh, School of Professional Psychology. I moved from Hawaii in 2016. Now I'm here in Colorado, but I will come back if you if you allow a psychologist to prescribe because I went to school for it two and a half years. I was trained by psychiatrists, by medical MDs, by nurse practitioners. Yeah, feel confident. We are, we're trained, we're qualified, we can do this. It's already successful in five other states. Guam, federal agencies, I'm ready. Mahalo. Okay, thank you very much. Next we have Michael Keller in support. Michael, are you present? Dr. I am present. Okay, please proceed. We can see and hear you. Great. Um, psychologists have been prescribing since 1974 with the Federal uh, Service, Indian Health Service. Since that time, they continue, as we've heard uh, testimony previously. Um, as a civilian psychologist working with the military, I safely wrote more than 8,000 prescriptions for those in need of that care. Many thousand more were, were uh, written by my colleagues. But sadly, after retiring from federal service, I couldn't provide these same services to my own community despite my postdoctoral specialized pharmacology training, my years of clinical experience, and my expertise. Now, I understand that there may be concerns or there have been stated concerns of uh, safety, but in fact, um, there are no safety issues as has been pointed out. Prescriptive authority for psychologists does not lead to worse outcomes. And in fact, suicide rates have actually decreased in those states that have passed laws uh, like we're talking about today. Uh, please vote yes on, on this bill. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Next up, Dr. Noelani Rodriguez in support. Dr. Rodriguez or- Not Rodriguez. present, Chair. Not present, thank you. Next, Chaska Gomez in support. Are you present, Chaska? Okay, moving on. Next is Robert McGrath in support. Next is Lee Epsilon in support. I am. Okay, I am oh, I see Dr. McGrath, please proceed. Yes. Hi, thank you. I was asked to testify today uh, be, as someone who has researched the impact of allowing psychologists to prescribe on suicide rates. I've been asked whether suicide rates have increased in New Mexico and Louisiana since psychologists were authorized to prescribe. My answer is, of course they have. That's because from 2000 to 2018, suicide rates in every state, including Hawaii, have increased by an average of 35%. The right question is whether allowing psychologists to prescribe has reduced the rate of increase. Two studies have examined that question, neither of which was conducted primarily by psychologists, and both said it has. One study by two economists found that in most years, suicide rates were significantly lower in both New Mexico and Louisiana than would be expected based on all the other states. My written testimony shows their graphs. I was also a co-author on a second study in which we found the same thing comparing New Mexico and Louisiana to similar states. Letting psychologists prescribe may not eliminate increases in suicide rates, but all the evidence we have available right now says it saves lives. Thank, okay, you. thank you very much. Next, I see Dr. Lee Epsilon. Um, in support, please proceed. You have one minute. Thank you. Thank you for this ability to testify. <clears throat> I'm Dr. Lee Epsilon. I'm strong support of SB 677. Um, my background is that I was, I've was i been on Kauai since 1979. I was CEO of Kauai Medical Clinic for 15 years. On Kauai, and my guess on, um, is the same on the other neighboring islands, we have an increasing shortage of primary care physicians. We also have always had a chronic shortage of psychiatrists, and across the nation we have increasing depression, anxiety, and other psychological conditions. Primary care physicians, the office of a primary care physician within the 10 to 15 minute visit is often not the optimal place to do a psychiatric evaluation. And yet we provide the bulk of medications for depression, anxiety in rural areas. When you have a shortage, that condition gets even worse. When you have a shortage of primary care, those visits get shorter, it's harder and harder to get in to see somebody. On the other hand, bills like this that provides um, prescriptive qualities or permission for psychologists with their longer visits, with their ability to 
Probably. Dr. Enslin, I'm going to need to cut you off. I do have your written testimony. I just yes, plead that we, this year, pass it. We've gone year by year. The problem I understand, is Dr. Epsilon. Thank you. Uh, uh, thank you. Next, I have Dr. Cla Claudia Mosier in support. I see her present on Zoom. Please proceed. <clears throat> Aloha and mahalo, honorable committee members, for allowing me to speak with you today. I am Dr. Claudia Mosier, a prescribing psychologist who has obtained over 20,000 hours of training. I completed my doctoral internship at the VA in Honolulu. I'm licensed to prescribe psychotropic medications in Illinois and Louisiana. I would love to work in Hawaii. You've heard from people present our old arguments against allowing appropriately trained psychologists, prescribing psychologists to prescribe in Hawaii. Those arguments have been disproved over and over again by actual data. You've heard all kinds of harsh things about us. I'm here to tell you that they are wrong. What we do works. What we do works. Prescribing psychologists combined, prescribing and very importantly, unprescribing with psychotherapeutic techniques. And this works. People don't have to see a therapist and also see a different provider on a different day for psychotropic medications. I can see a patient for an hour a week if needed. What other prescriber can do this? I look forward to giving you examples of our work and answering your questions. Mahalo. Hey, thank you very much. Next, um, we have 59 other individuals in support providing written testimony. I see Dr. Iqbal Ahmed in opposition on Zoom. Please proceed. Yeah, uh, aloha chair and members of the committee. I'm speaking in strong opposition to this bill. And the reasons are uh, primarily because of safety issues. I know that people say that there are really no adverse effects. The fact of the matter, the serious adverse effects all psychiatric medications has significant medical effects and all, most psych medical drugs have significant psychiatric effects. The real need is actually for more mental health providers who can provide therapy and other psychological services because the reason is that uh, most psychological therapies and therapy work as well if not better than medications for things such as anxiety, depression and PTSD. And I think if you want to think about this, no other country in the world uh, allows for psychologists to prescribe medications. There's a good reason for that, and I've already stated that. And thank you for hearing me out. Thank you very much. Um, next, we have Jeffrey Singer providing comments. I see you on Zoom. Please proceed. <clears throat> thank you, Chair, members of the committee. My name is Jeffrey Singer. I'm a general surgeon in Phoenix, Arizona, and I'm also a senior fellow at the Cato Institute in Washington. In October, I published a paper on this subject, and I've submitted my full comments in writing and stand by those comments. More than 30 years ago, the Department of Defense trained clinical psychologists to prescribe psych meds to increase the workforce of prescribing psychotherapists. Today, prescribing psychologists practice in several federal agencies, five states, and the territory of Guam. As I point out in my paper, the evidence shows that prescribing psychologists prescribe as safely as and possibly more conservatively than psychiatrists. Hawaii lawmakers can help increase access to medically assisted mental health services by licensing prescribing psychologists without expending any taxpayer dollars. Thank you. I'll be happy to take any questions. Hey, thank you. Next, we have 44 individuals in opposition. No one else having registered to testify. Anybody wishing to testify on SB 677, please come on up and- Great for Dr. Coleman, Psych Psychological Association. He's on video, he just needs a few seconds to turn his Okay, Dr. Follin. I thought I called you already. But Dr. Follin, um, yes. please. Okay, could you testify? Could you, we can hear you, sort of. We don't see you. Dr. Follin, can you say something? Okay. Well, you know what? I should say Well, Okay, we have 19 other measures and I have a hard stop. We won't be able to do DM if we hold for anybody. So you need to come on up here, identify yourself and, and um, you have one minute. And we may have questions. I thought that was probably the best way to do it. Thank you. Um, just you're well aware of the shortage of psychiatrists, the Kaiser family. family. You need to identify yourself, please. Alex Victor. I'm the uh, legislative chair for the Hawaii Psychological Association. Good afternoon. Okay, you're please proceed. You're well aware. Of okay, wait a second. I see Dr. Poland finally on. 
Okay, please proceed. You have one minute. Yeah, yeah, Mike. Okay, yeah, you can leave if you want to. Um, please proceed. You have one minute. We can't hear you. Okay, now you can go right into your mic and talk. We can hear you when you're right into your mic. No, we can't hear you. Okay, so Alex Lipton, you want to hurry up and, <laughs> but you know, if we don't DM this, your bill isn't going to pass. So, or, or. Well, I hope this doesn't hurt our bill. Well, you got 30 seconds. You're well aware the shortage, the Kaiser Family Foundation did a study estimating that at most the number of available psychiatrists in Hawaii only satisfies 18% of the need, you know. This is an experiment that has already been conducted. As you know, you know, psychologists have been describing for decades. I just want to draw your attention. I think it's somewhere in your testimony. The United States General Accounting Office report, I think it's pretty conclusive in looking at the results of psychologists prescribing. It speaks to the safety issue. So this is an experiment where you have the results. And if the results show that it's safe, why not? do this to increase access to fill the shortage. That's all I want to say. Thank, Thank you, you very much. And I see uh, Mr. Kim yes. raising your hand. Come on up, Department of Health. Oh, or for yourself. Please, uh, no, for the department, please. Uh, for uh, people our late testimony. Okay. And I will also submit to the court. Uh, Lauren Kim, Planning and Policy Office for the Department of Health. Uh, the department looks forward to this conversation mm -hmm. continuing. Uh, however, we do ask for amendments that exclude DOH consumers. On the adult side, severe, uh, seriously uh, mentally ill adults uh, having life expectancy decades lower than the general population. It's a high risk, high acuity population. And um, there needs to be, I think, a wait and see to see how this plays out. Uh, by definition, the department has the most, uh, the sickest of the sick patients. And so we would like them to be excluded from this. Um, the, regarding minors and children, that's probably a conversation worthy of its own um, time. Uh, but at a minimum, we would ask that, uh, again, um, can be consumers are considered out of scope. Uh, children are completely different creatures. And again, uh, by definition and by, by program eligibility, uh, our clients um, are the highest risk and have the highest acuity and complexity. Lastly, we are recommending an amendment to the reporting requirements uh, that includes uh, more detailed information on specific medications and frequencies of prescriptions just to add to the general discussion and analysis. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, anybody else wishing to testify on SB 677? Seeing none, members, any questions? Okay, seeing none. Um, Board of Psychology? Is anybody here from Board of Psychology? No? Hello, Mr. Fernandez. Um, good teacher. Good afternoon. So Department of Health, since uh, Board of Psychology came in and basically said that it needed staff to implement and rules to, and to draft administrative rules. Um, I believe you folks are the ones who are supposed to do the re reporting requirements, but um, what, are your, what are your concerns regarding the DOH's proposed recommendation that the reporting requirements actually list specific medications and frequency of prescription? Or is that going to be considered as part of the administrative rules that you folks will be drafting? Um, I, I cannot speak to that specifically. Um, unfortunately, the board didn't discuss that specific matter at okay. its meeting um, on the uh, 3rd of February. Um, however, I can bring those questions to the legislative committee to get some answers. Um, that is a consideration that I, that the board probably would be willing to review and look at. Okay. Thank you very much. Any other questions? Seeing none, we're going to move on. SD 693. First up, DCCA providing comments. Okay, next up, we have the Department of Human Services. Thank you very much. Next, we have Walgreens in support. Okay, thank you. Board of Pharmacy in support. 
Cheryl Stein and I are testimony to that. Okay, Hawaii Pharmacists Association in support. We stand on our right testimony. Okay, thank you. AARP in support. AARP, are you there in Zoom, Audrey? Yes. Hi, this is Audrey for ARP, Audrey Suga Nakagawa. Um, ARP stands on, on our testimony in support of this measure. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Next, we have Hawaii Community Pharmacists Association in support, Cato Prescription and Kailua Cardiology in support, UH in support, American Pharmacists Association in support, Hawaii Pharmacists Association in support, Times Pharmacy in support, White Pacific Health in support, Queen's Health System providing comments. Okay, and 28 other individuals in support. Anybody else wishing to testify on SB 693? Okay, questions, members? Okay, seeing them, we're moving on. SB 759. First up, Hawaii Island Fent Fentanyl Task Force in support, Dr. Kimo Alameda. Next, we have R&D, County of Hawaii. In support, we have Dr. Fink, Department of Health, Providing comments. Okay, I didn't see the amendments, but we'll see. Okay, um, next Hawaii State Youth Commission in support. I see Zoe Duan there. Yes. Okay, proceed. Okay, thank you. Aloha Chu, Buena Ventura, and members of the Senate Committee on Health and Human Services. My name is Zoe Duan, and I am speaking today on behalf of the Hawaii State Youth Commission. The Hawaii State Youth Commission is in strong support of SB 759. As mentioned in our testimony, one of the most critical issues in Hawaii's current public health situation is inaccessibility and its effects on disadvantaged communities. It is an issue that has been overlooked for too long, and uh, such differences can, can significantly impact the health outcomes of patients, and in some cases, it is the difference between life and death. And therefore, we would like to ensure that working towards an establishing a pilot program and a comprehensive 2023 would be a crucial step to filling the critical gap in Hawaii's public health system. Therefore, the Hawaii State Youth Commission strongly urges the commission, the committee to pass SB 759. Thank you and I yield the rest of my time. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, anybody else wishing to testify on SB 759? Okay, thank you very much. Anybody else wishing to testify in SB 759? Questions, members? Okay, moving on. SB 791, Department of Health, providing comments. Okay, thank you very much. Next up, we have American Medical Response and Support. The MR. Yeah, good afternoon. Speedy Daly, Regional Director. Real quickly, we provided EMS to Maui County for 40 years. We were prepared. I was here in 2008 before one Senator Green testifying on this measure. I was here last year. It passed all committees. And we we're here to tell you that we could deliver the service. We could staff it. We're the only provider staffed with medics to do so in the state at this time. So thank you. Available questions. Okay, thank you very much. Next, we have, Amer again, American Medical Responsito Villanueva in support. Queens Health Systems in support. Maui County Paramedics Association in support. And nine other individuals in support. Any Anybody else wishing to testify on SB 791? Questions, members? Okay, seeing that we're moving on. SB 842, Department of Human Services providing comments. Okay, thank you very much. Next, we have Hawaii Friends of Civil Rights in support. Please proceed. Uh, one you. minute. <clears throat> Aloha, my name is Pat McFadden, and um, I'm co chair with Amy Agriani at the Hawaii um, Friends of Civil Rights. We speak in um, strong support of this measure. Uh, as, as you know, um, or may not know, I spent over 15 years of my legal career working with um, indigent immigrants at Maui and the Kanaka. Um, many of our clients were undocumented, and many of our many of our undocumented clients we were able to secure legal status for. These are among the most fragile, needy members of our community. Back in those days, the interagency um, uh, council for immigrants. Um, put together a measure which was funded um, up through 2014 was the last date that I could find 
um, that appropriated of annually $500,000 a year um, um, to assist the federally qualified health centers in um, providing uh, needed care for undocumented um, immigrants. Um, it, this is not a direct appropriation, um, but that would certainly be within the scope of the Department of Human okay, Services to direct you. that appropriation. We have Thank a written you. testimony. Thank it's you. Right in front of me. Okay, next I see um, Bettina, well, that's for the next bill, or it is the same bill, sorry. Bettina Ma, Legal Clinic and Support, I see you present. You have one minute. Currently, yes, exactly. We stand in support of this bill. Um, I'm the executive director of the legal clinic. We see lots of clients undocumented who do not have access to these benefits and it's life saving for them in some cases. So we stand in support. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Hawaii Primary Care Association in support. Okay, thank you very much. Next we have um, Hawaii Care Healthcare for immigrants. Healthcare for immigrants? Hawaii oh, Coalition for Immigrant Rights. L Liza Ryan Gill and support. Liza, are you on Zoom? I present on Zoom chair. Okay, next we have Cynthia Ao, American Cancer Society, Cancer Society Cancer Action Network and support. Next we have Hawaii State Youth Commission. Zoe Duan, are you still present? Providing yeah. comments. Yes, aloha chair and members of the Senate Committee on Health and Human Services again. My name is Zoe and I'm still speaking on behalf of Hawaii State Youth Commission and the commission is in support with comments of uh, SB 842. We strongly support the intent of this measure to put critical funding towards meeting the healthcare needs of Hawaii's youth and their families. However, the language within this bill will, would be uh, best clarified and we're wondering one which department or agency would be administering the appropriations made from this measure and two how would the legislature be defining who is quote unquote low income health care is a basic right for all and we are very supportive of the legislature working towards expanding it for some of the most vulnerable communities here in hawaii we hope that you clarify the bill language then pass sb 842 out of your committee mahalo for the opportunity to testify okay thank you very much Okay, anybody else wishing to testify on, oh, there are four other individuals who have testified in support. Anybody else wishing to testify on SB 842? Okay, seeing none, members, any questions? Okay, Pat McNaman, could you come on up? I have a question. Okay, so Hawaii State Youth Commission rightly pointed out that we have not actually defined low-income immigrants. Yeah, I, I think the standard would be um, below 200% of poverty level, but it would certainly be 200%. It would certainly be up to you. You could align it with the Medicaid standards, which I think are about 135% of poverty. Um, and, and poverty level is determined by HUD? Yes. No, I see. Um, Dr. Thanks. Health and Human Services. 150% of HHS. Of federal, poverty level. federal poverty level. As the okay. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, any other questions, members? Seeing none, we're gonna move on. Not next is SB 845. First up is Board of Acupuncture in support. In, and that is Rize Doy present. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, next we have Institute of Clinical Acupuncture in support. Why Hoalo? Yes. I, I stand by uh, in support from some uh, concerns from the government. Okay, well, you want to come on up? Please identify yourself. Uh, my name is Wai Holo. I'm the president and CEO of the Institute of Clinical Acupuncture and Oriental Medicine. We are the only accredited school here offering a master's and doctoral uh, program. Uh, it's been 20 years since we revised our laws and the profession is moving very fast. Um, so I support the bill, but uh, in uh, section two, 
Um, yeah, for forty six E C reciprocity is a major concern with uh, our students and uh, providers. So okay. I hope you can consider uh, filling that out. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Request. Yes. Okay. Next up, we have Acuplan Hawaii and support. <coughs> Next, we have Hawaii Acupuncture Medicine Association in support. Next, okay, are you present, Dr. Barbara Ota? Uh, honored senators, uh, yes, we are in support. And I couldn't hear everybody's because I'm on Zoom, but we are definitely stand by our written testimony. But based on any testimonies, uh, if they're staffing or a cost burden or more burdens to the profession, we are very amendable to that. Okay, thank you very much. And I thank see Amanda Price in support. Um, please proceed. For Acuplan Hawaii. Okay. Hi, yes, I'm um, Samantha Price. I'm president of Acuplan Hawaii, and we are a preferred uh, provider organization. So we contract with insurance companies for acupuncture, and we um, provide guidance to our acupuncturists regarding insurance coverage. And some of the issues we run into are the language in the scope of practice is not specific enough um, for the insurance companies to always know what they can and cannot um, pay for. So one of the um, major issues is the evaluation, the ability to evaluate our, our patients. And it's not currently written in the scope of practice. Um, it's in this in the update though so we strongly support this this bill um thank you very much okay thank you very much next um no one else having registered we have east to west integrative medicine and support kailua acupuncture clinic and support windward wellness and support american acupuncture council and support ruben enterprise llc and support ocean med clinic Kauai high and support Analyza Van Dyne um, in support, Integrated Medicine Oahu LLC in support, American Academy of Medical Acupuncture in opposition, Institute Acupuncture and Oriental Medicine, Dr. Michelle Russo in opposition. Are you present, Michelle Russo? Okay, um, next we have Chief Lifestyle Medical Center in opposition, Longevity Health Center in opposition. Hawaii Medical Association providing comments. Joni Crow, present um, in support. Yes. Thanks. Well, you need to, we need to record you. Please identify yourself. And your I am Dr. Joni Kroll and practiced for 34 years in Kailua. And I'm speaking right now as an individual, although I also am chair of the Board of Acupuncture. And I wanted to comment on the DCCA's concerns about the impact to them on the staffing and the burden potentially with some of these changes and to acknowledge that the reciprocity is one area that I would be willing to amend my testimony to say could also be dropped as Dr. Wailo also testified from the Institute of Clinical Acupuncture and Oriental Medicine, as I believe that is the DCA's biggest concern about the uh, being able to carry out those changes and the cost and burden to them. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Um, next we have Cindy Chan. Are you present in support? I'm in support. Okay, thank you. you. Would you like to testify? You have one minute. Yes. Please proceed. I mean, come on up, identify yourself. Good afternoon, my name is Cindy Chang. As a licensed acupuncturist practitioner and an active member of Hawaii Acupuncture Medicine Association, I strongly support this measure as it is updated and the present statute relating to acupuncture. This measure will facilitate the standardization of education, national certifications, and acknowledges master and doctorate degrees. I've been a licensed acupuncturist since 1999. This measure will accommodate myself and other legacy practitioners with exemptions enabling us to continue to treat our patients. Changes in the license requirement, particularly in the addition of a continued education component, 
will ensure that our community receives the standard care treatments and provides for additional patient safety measures. I am willing to comply with the proposed license requirements. Okay, Ms. Chang, we have your written testimony. I'm looking at it right here. Okay, so thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, appreciate it. Okay, next up. We have 19 other individuals in support, 10 individuals in opposition, and three individuals providing comments. Um, anybody else wishing to testify on SB 845? Saying on, moving on. Oh, questions, questions? Okay, we, we don't have DCCA here. So, oh, DCCA, are you with DCCA? Okay, come on up. Um, basically, is it, your major opposition, I don't think you have major opposition. There's um, no opposition, there's just uh, comments. Okay, and basically, what is your response regarding the reciprocity? Um, paragraph. Would you folks be able to to implement it? No, there's probably going to be a cost to it, and also the time it would take to update everything. So, so it, so it basically, it's a delay and a cost. Yes. yes. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Yeah. Okay. Um, anybody else wishing to testify on SB eight four five? Okay, we're moving on. SB nine one six. First up, we have Office of the Public Defender in opposition. Okay, next we have Hawaii State Department of Health providing comments. We can have our testimony as submitted in the meeting after the Okay, thank you very much. Next we have Judiciary providing comments. Next we have Hawaii Disability Rights Center in opposition. Yes, thank you. Louis Richard. Okay, Senator, you have one minute. Yes, the bill is very problematic. The administrative panels are only used at the state hospital for people already in the custody. So this bill would expand it to somebody that's picked up on an MH1 brought to an emergency room because a police officer called the psychologist on the phone and said, okay, bring, bring him in. And all of a sudden they're gonna be subject to long lasting medication. Uh, the administrative panel we think is unconstitutional. I spoke to the AG last year, they, they agreed. So we've tried to support strengthening the act, but this is clearly not the way to do it. We uh, definitely oppose this bill a lot, and I appreciate the public defenders weighing in. So thank you, Senator. Okay, thank you very much. I see Queen's Health System on Zoom providing comments. JC. Chair, we'll stand on our written comments. Thank you. Okay, and I have three other individuals um in support i i um lee hayakawa are you testifying sb 916 yes uh i am uh senator um please proceed uh, one minute okay thank you uh, I, i'm here in place of uh, deputy public defender johnny kinaga uh, good afternoon chair ben buenaventura vice chair Aquino, members of the committee uh, my name is lee hayakawa uh, on behalf of the office of the public defender the Office of the Public Defender strongly opposes SB number 916. Um, we will be submitting on our written testimony today. I will be available for questions. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Um, anybody else wishing to testify on SB 916? Members, any questions? Okay, seeing I'm moving on. SB 987, first up, the Department of Health in support. Yes, we always Okay, thank you very much. Next, we have um, Judiciary and Support, Hawaii Disability Rights Center, Louis Urchik and Support. Yes. For the, yes, you're in support, right? No, no, we stand on that. It's a great idea. Thank you very much. Okay, next we have for the individuals in support. Anybody else wishing to testify in SB 987? Members, any questions? Okay, we're going to move on. SB 1038, Department of Human Services, providing comments. Thank you, Senator Chair. Yeah, we stand on our written testimony yeah. offering comments on Section 2, and we offer, also offer a Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Um, next, we have, this is, um, I'm sorry, I just want to make sure I'm at, right, 1038. Okay, next we have BCCA providing comments. 
Okay, next we have the Hawaii Islands Association for Marriage and Family Therapy and Support. Becky Gardner, you have one minute. Yeah, Chair, Vice Chair, um, just briefly, um, we just wanted to highlight that the proposal pins the definition of interactive telecommunication system based on what's happening at the federal level. We believe that this is a wise policy because this meets patients where they are and wherever the deliberations and best practices determined at the federal level, this will pin what happens in Hawaii statutes on that. So um, please, uh, we uh, appreciate your favorable consideration. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Hawaii Primary Care Association and support. Yeah. Okay. Eric Abe. Hi, Eric Abe. I just wanted to share that um, we are in discussions with HMSA to try to work out a compromise on this issue. Um, we want to thank HMSA for their efforts in this regard. Thanks. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, next we have um, National Association of Social Workers. Well, that's you again. Uh, yeah, Becky Gardner. Yeah. Okay, next we have um, Hawaii Psychological Association and Support. Okay, thank you very much. Next we have Aloha Care and Support. Aloha Care, right here. I'm Mike Lynn with Aloha Care. Uh, Okay, next we have AARP and support. Audrey Susan Akagao for AARP. We stand our testimony in support and just want to recognize and appreciate having audio only as one of the inner uh, telehealth modality of communication. Thank you. Okay, next we have Elemental Guidance, LLC and support. I see Dr. Deepa. Aloha, namaste. I'm, I'm Dr. Deepa Ram Souza. Um, I hope you can hear me. I yes, serve my community can. as a licensed marriage and family therapist and also a grand juror. Uh, these roles have solidified my fear. Those who seek therapy and are up for trials are predominantly from low income families of color. They live in rural areas, engage in risky behaviors to make ends meet, experience a lack of mental health care support have untreated multi-generational adversities and are matriarchs in their families. In each of these scenarios, I've observed three identical scarcities, time and economic fluidity for travel, updated technology, and efficient internet services. This snapshot highlights healthcare disparities at its worst. Thanks to the accidental blessings of COVID-19, telephonic care has met the needs of these people of color more in the past three years than ever before. Eliminating telephonic uh, therapy reinforces healthcare disparities and promotes iatrogenic harm. Simply maintaining all forms of therapeutic technologies is a matter of ethical, moral, and cultural. Okay, opinion. thank you very much. We have your written testimony. Thank okay. you. Okay, thank next we have Hawaii Substance Abuse Coalition and support, Hawaii Medical Association and support, UH and support, Hawaii Parkinson Association and support, American Cancer. Society Cancer Action Network in support, Hawaii Disability Rights Center in support, Hawaii Pacific Health in support, Jennifer Stevens, MA in support, Elemental Guidance, LLC in support, Anuhea San Laurent Marriage and Family Therapy in support, Hawaii Psychological Association, Becky Gardner again, a third time in support, Alzheimer's Association in support, Kapolei Chamber of Commerce and support HMSA providing comments. Jennifer. Good afternoon. Thank you for the opportunity. Um, HMSA is in support of the concept of audio only telehealth for behavioral health services only. There's a requirement in place at the federal level for Medicare and Medicaid that does not exist in the employer purchase community. And so what we're trying to do is work with the advocates to ensure that we pro provide for statutory guidance and statutory regulatory basis in our state law where HMSA for the commercial population in the employer population, it would be reimbursed at 80% as opposed to at 100% of eligible charge. And the rationale in part is we don't believe that this is the best standard of care, but we do believe that it is a tool in the toolbox for mental health 
providers, particularly for communities that may be broadband challenged or digital literacy challenged. And we want to ensure that the services are available to everyone, as we know there is a shortage of mental health providers in our community. So we're working on some language, hopefully by the time um, the committee decision makes or it gets to the next committee, we'll have finalized language for you. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Um, <clears throat> okay, next up we have Hawaii Counseling and Education Center in opposition and 25 other individuals in support. Anybody else wishing to testify on SB 1038? Members, any questions? Okay, um, did Eric Abe leave already? Oh, Why don't you come on up? I have a question. Okay, so HLSA, did you see the written testimony? Uh, I, yes, or I, I'm pretty, Yes. Basically, they want um, they allow for reimbursement of services provided via interactive telecommunication system, except for two-way real-time audio-only communication technology for purposes of diagnosis, evaluation, or treatment of a mental health disorder to a patient in their home, as defined by Title 42 CFR, which shall be paid at 80% of the same services provided be a face-to-face -face between a healthcare provider and a patient. Um, comments? Sure. Um, basically, the idea of the 80% uh, came from Hawaii's no-fault automobile law. Um, when, the, when the legislature um, sought to address the rising costs of no-fault premium costs, uh, the legislature put in a mechanism that linked reimbursement to the Medicare fee schedule with language in the statute that says anything that is not um, listed in the schedule would be compensated at 80% of um, what was customary. If so what about Hawaii Primary Care Association's um, position? Are you folks okay with the 80% if it's audio only? From our perspective, we are negotiating that with HMSA. That was okay. something, that was a proposal that has been discussed. Um, we offered a counter proposal to that. Okay. And that is something that, um, you know, if anything, we hope to get um, a resolution on this before the end of this legislative session. We do realize that this is very early in the session. Okay, thank you very much. Okay. Okay, and um, I guess Judy Moore Peterson, Medicaid. Does Medicaid pay for um, just audio only? We do currently. Um, and during, no discount of 80%? No discount of 80% currently. It's uh, because of the COVID, what's going on during COVID-19, we've continued to allow um, audio only. But that's because of emergency proclamation. But that's uh, that's if this, correct. If but this passes. The federal, and we would, we would follow, follow whatever, we whatever the law was. Mm -hmm. Okay. But so long as the emergency proclamation, despite this passage, you folks um, will pay 100% of whatever the Medicare, Medicaid got guidelines are. We, we would, we would follow, we would follow suit. Right. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And Becky Gardner, I'm sorry. You heard the, end, the exchange, please come on up. You guys okay? Um, psycho, psychologists and therapists, or who, the three people you represent, three organizations you represent. Yes. Okay. You, you folks okay with the 80% for audio only? Um, well, there's still a lot of terms that are up in the air. We're so still negotiating. We're still negotiating, yeah. Okay, thank you very much. Any other questions? Well, we're the only two here, so. We're moving on. So um, next up, SB 1369. First up, we have Hawaii State Department of Health and Support. Dr. Sue. 
Good afternoon, Chair, Vice Chair. Um, the, the department strongly supports this measure and supports that Oahu region remain under HHSC with its own program ID. Okay. Uh, last year, we submitted a report to the legislature that indicated that the transition cost of moving Oahu region over to the hospital would be at the tune of $10 million with an ongoing $5 million price tag. We believe that the intent of the legislature for Department of Health to utilize the space over at Oahu region um, can be accomplished without that transition. Okay, thank you very thank much. You. Okay, next up, uh, um, University of Hawaii in support. Next, we have Sean Sonata, I see you over here. Oahu region providing comments. Good afternoon, Chair, Vice Chair. I thank you for the opportunity to testify. Um, I think I've testified quite thoroughly in our written testimony. Um, so if you let me, I stand on our written testimony and be available for any questions. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, anybody else? Stick around, Sean. Um, for SB 1369, <coughs> members, any questions? Sean, I have a question. Come on up. Okay, you know, we've been pushing for this uh, movement to help you folks out. Um, my question is, isn't this premature because it, it, it doesn't, there's a huge delay in implementation anyway. Can't we just wait until it's closer to implementation to see whether or not the contracts that the Department of Health has been promising to help you folks upgrade comes through? I think the issue though is because of that 10 million cost, in order for this process to be completed, it will take, I believe based on a report, about two and a half years to accomplish, which will require an appropriation of that initial 10 million to make it happen. Um, so that's why the issues come to the forefront right now. For us, we submitted comments just because uh, we know that there are still uh, some legislators who are interested in the transition, are they seeing how it can develop? But for us, because we know you all want action now, and there's an issue that is plaguing the community now. We're trying to implement programs that focus our energy towards that. Uh, there's a couple of How things. How about this? How about we delay the implementation even further for another two years, just to see whether or not the Department of Health and you folks are gonna be able to have the contracts to implement this behavioral health beds. Do you have any problem with that? As stated in our testimony, if that's what um, everyone thinks is the best thing to do, we're fine with it, as long as we don't come against that deadline. And for that reason, we would be happy if you guys want us to, to reevaluate you know, the transition. So but for another two years. Yeah. Okay, you're okay with that. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, moving on. Next up, SB 1370. Okay, we only have Department of Health in support. Good afternoon, Chair, Vice Chair, Lauren Kim, Planning and Policy Officer for the Department of Health. Thank you for hearing this administration proposal. Um, this measure is required to avoid another lawsuit with the subject of a lawsuit due to the fact that a secular a person with no judicial or religious affiliation could not be licensed to solemnize a marriage. Um, and there was a well-intended amendment to establish a fee where there was none before. So we are charging uh, secular solemnizers, civil solemnizers, uh, where we are not doing so for judicial and religious performers. Uh, the other point I'd like to make is that um, for wedding industry professionals, and there are 20,000 marriage licenses issued a year, um, the service is free. So we offer this license free of charge. Uh, we think that a fee across the board that gets put back into our vital statistics special fund to improve customer service uh, is appropriate since uh, the department staff are doing all the work and many times these industry professionals will charge a, uh, a couple, uh, several hundred dollars to officiate their marriage. So um, we realize the wedding industry is very important and we do offer a recommendation um, for non-professionals. For example, if you want to marry your best friend, if you want to perform this ceremony for your best friend or for a family member, um, you can get maybe a temporary license that lasts two months for say, $25. Yeah. So uh, that's not reflected in the amendments. And if you like, I can actually provide the wording and email to your committee, should you consider that. Thank you for the opportunity to testify. Okay. 
Um, anybody else wishing to testify on SB 1370? Seeing none, um, I have a question, Mr. Kim. So when are you gonna give us the written proposed amendments to SB 1370? Because we have to do a committee report before the first level. Uh, no later than tomorrow at noon. Tomorrow, no, no, okay. Yeah, for, uh, for the for written. A quick amendment. Okay, sounds good. Thank you. You're, we're going to hold you to that. Thank you. Okay. Next up, um, SB 1371. First up, we have Domestic Violence Action Center providing comments. Okay, next up, we have Department of Health in support for 1371. Mr. Kim. Yes, thank you again for this is another administration proposal. Uh, seeking to increase the fee from sixty to one hundred dollars for a marriage license, um, the sixty dollars fee is dispersed into many uh, accounts, the general fund, several domestic action violence funds, um, not to the Office of Vital Records. So again, uh, DOH Vital Records that are doing all the work but are not seeing any of the funds. We would like to uh, the legislature to consider uh, giving the Office of Vital Records um, uh, some monies from marriage licenses so that they can put it into their special fund and conduct quality improvement um, and operational uh, and to support operations. Um, $100 is on the higher end of the states. So if you consider a lower fee, one of the ways uh, to kind of reach the policy goal that we would like is to take the additional revenue and put it just into the Department of Health's special fund. Um, and we also wanna increase the commission that private agents who are absolutely critical on neighbor islands for issuing match licenses. Uh, they haven't had a quote unquote raise in their commission fee uh, for I think 10 or 15 years. Um, so keep up um, and show our appreciation for private agents. We, we are also recommending that additional monies uh, go to increasing the private agent commission, which is currently $9. Uh, thank okay, you for thank the opportunity. You so much. Okay, next up we have SB 1371. No one else. Anybody else wishing to testify for SB 1371? Members, any questions? Um, seeing none, I, I think, um, Mr. Kim, I have a question. Yes. So basically, if we accept your, the, um, your proposed written amendments and issue a $75 fee instead of a $100 fee, basically none of the other special funds will be will benefit them. It'll just be DOH and the private agent commission. That's correct. And again, those are the individuals doing all the work creating passive income for those special funds. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, next up. So 1378 relating to unlicensed care homes. First up, we have Dr. Department of Health and Support. Good afternoon, Chair. Keith Ridley on behalf of the Director of Health. Uh, the department strongly supports uh, this measure. This is an admin bill. And I just wanted to comment that the, in the proposed uh, language, any person could refer to anyone who is unlicensed or uncertified as an operator, which could also include formerly uh, licensed or certified operators. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, next up we have um... Alliance of Professional Primary Care Administration in support. Anybody else wishing to testify on SB 1378? Well, good afternoon. Tim Hitchens, Social Services Division Assistant Administrator. We submitted testimony very late. I apologize for the mix up, um, but just offering comments and deferring to the Department of Health. So I can hand that to you now. That's yes, helpful. please. Okay, thank you. Just that as drafted, this would not impact uh, the way we refer and cross refer to DOH for investigations. Okay, thank you very much. Okay. Um, anybody else we can testify in SB 1378? Members, any questions? <laughs> Seeing none, we're moving on to SB 1446. First up, Insurance Division, DCC, DCCA, providing comments. Okay, next up, we have Leukemia and Lymphoma Society and support. Did I miss one? 15 minutes late. 
Okay, we're going to move it. Okay, next up, we have Hawaii Association of Health Plans in opposition, HMSA, and providing comments. Hello again, thank you for the opportunity. Um, HMSA is providing comments, um, but we, we do not oppose the bills currently drafted. As I think you're aware, the legislature has its own rules around asking for an auditor state study when there is going to be a new mandated benefit put into place. So we believe that the study should be conducted first rather than moving the bill forward uh, with a resolution for the study. Okay, thank, thank you, you very much. Next up, we have Kaiser Permanente providing comments. Association of Clinical Oncology. Um, Hawaii Society of Clinical Oncology and Support. And we have Daywood, Day, Dave Haywood of HAHP on Zoom. Um, please proceed, you have one minute for SB 1446. Thank you. Good afternoon, Chair and Vice Chair Dave Haywood from the Hawaii Association of Health Plans. Uh, you have our testimony, I'll stand on that. Uh, we recommend either deferral of this bill or similar to HMSA and the insurance commissioner for the state auditor to conduct a impact assessment report, um, either of those two recommendations. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Anybody else wishing to testify on SB 1446? Okay, members, any questions? Okay, moving on, SB 1340. First up, DCCA and support. Thank you. Um, Department of Education and Support. Good afternoon, Chair, Vice Chair. Um, Annie Kalama, Office of Student Support Services, Department of Education. Uh, thank you for hearing this admin bill. We um, stand on our written testimony and support and we're available if you have questions. Okay, thank you very much. Next up, State Council on Developmental Disabilities and Support. Hi, I'm Sarah, and Support. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you. Next up, HSTA and support. Well, hello, Chair and Vice Chair. Laverne Moore speaking on behalf of President Osa Tui Jr., President of the Hawaii State Teachers Association. The HSTA supports Senate Bill 1340 relating to the practice of behavioral analysts. And we stand on our written testimony. We want to make one key point here. The Hawaii State Teachers Association wants to make it very clear our special education teachers may implement ABA plans, but they should not create, write, nor monitor applied behavior analysis plans. LBAs and psychologists are mental health professionals. Teachers are education professionals. We support each other. Thank you for the opportunity to testify. Okay, thank you very much. Next, we have um, Special Education Advisory Council and Support, Susan Vocal. Okay, um, please proceed. For yeah, Susan Vocal. Uh, one minute, HADA, I see you there. Kristen, I don't know. Uh, this is Susan Rocco. Okay, please proceed, you have one minute. Yes, the Special Education Advisory Council has been supporting this amendment for at least four years and we believe uh, that it's an important one to expand opportunities for kids with autism and other behavioral needs. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Next, we have Hawaii Disability Rights Center and so providing okay. comments. Louis Urchit. Yeah, we stand on that. Okay, thank you very much. Hawaii Association for Behavioral Analysts. I, Kristen Koba Burke, I saw you on Zoom providing comments. Please proceed. Thank you, Chair. The association stands on its written comments and we're available for questions. Okay, thank you very much. Next, we have Together for our Keiki providing comments, Dr. Amanda Kelly. Okay, anybody else wishing to testify on SB 1340? Questions, members, seeing that on SB 1372, we only have one testifier, Department of Health, Executive Office of Aging in support. Excuse thank me. you for doing this. Our admin manager is standing. Thank you. I'm sorry. There is a couple more. Pabea in support and Logan Nishihara in support. Anybody else wishing to testify on SB 1372? Seeing none, SB 1373. Oh, any members? Questions? Any members? Nothing. Thank you. Next up, last bill. 
1373, Executive Office of Aging and Support. Yes, we stand responsible. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else wish to testify on SB 1373? Okay, seeing none, members, any questions? Seeing none, we're going to do a short recess for decision making. We need Okay, calling the 1 p.m. calendar for um, Health and Human Services for decision making. First up, SB 14144. Um, chair's recommendation is to defer that based upon Department of Human Services comments that there's already a US GAO report already um, regarding this issue. So next up for SB 318, chair's recommendation is to pass with amendments, we are going to accept the Department of Health's proposed amendment of actually having a five-year pilot project. Um, and we're going to note that there's a blank appropriation amount. Any comments, questions, concerns? No task force, but we're just going to do it. Okay, seeing none, Vice Chair for the vote. Chair votes aye. Okay, Senate Bill 318, recommendation of the chair to pass with amendments. Chair votes aye. Vice Chair votes aye. Senator Mori Walkie. Aye. Senator Shimbukuro is excused. Senator Alwa. Aye. Thank you very much. Recognition is adopted. Ah, oh, surprising, yes. Okay. Um, SB 602. Um, Chair's recommendation is to pass with amendments. We're going to accept Walgreens proposed amendment and add a defect date um, in the event more amendments are necessary. Says, are necessary. Any comments, questions, concerns? Seeing on Vice Chair for the vote. Okay, Senate Bill 602, recognition is of the Chair's to pass with amendments. Okay, no need to excuse absence of Senator Shimbukuro. Any reservations? Any no's? Recommendation is adopted. Okay, Chairs, um, for SB 677, as the testimony has stated, we're going to pass, I mean, we've been discussing this issue for almost two decades. And first time I've actually seen that there hasn't been any opposition by the psychologists themselves. So we're gonna pass this with amendments. Um, the board is to draft administrative rules. The board of psychology is to draft administrative rules to implement. We're gonna put in uh, also a blank appropriation amount and an effective date two years after approval. Um, add in on line D, line 16 on page nine to include a rule that whenever possible for prescribing psychologists to collaborate with a patient's primary health care provider and add a defect date. Um, on the committee report, we're going to reflect the Board of Psychology's request for staff and time to implement and the number of staff and how much and also include in the committee report um, a witness Steinman's proposed amendment on page five for the Board of Psychologists to consider drafting, to, for the court to consider drafting in its administrative rules, those who are already practicing psychologists, and add in DOH's Department of Health concerns. Any comments, questions, concerns? Seeing none, Vice Chair for the vote. Yes, okay, Senate Bill 677, SD1. Any reservations? Any no's? No vote. Okay, thank you very much. Recommendation is adopted. Okay, for SB 693, Chair's recommendation is to just pass this with a defect date. And we're going to note in the committee report, Department of Human Services request of an effective date six months from approval. Any comments, questions, concerns? Seeing none, Vice Chair for the vote. Okay, yeah, Senate Bill 693, recommendation of the Chair to pass uh, with amendments. Any reservations? Any no's? Recommendation is adopted. Okay, for SB 759, Chair's recommendation is to pass this with the final felt amendments and to ensure that there is a blank appropriation amount. Um, and in the committee report, we are going to note, well, we are going to note the final felt concerns. Any comments, questions, concerns? Seeing none, Vice Chair for the vote. Okay. 
Senate Bill 759, recommendation of the chair to pass uh, as a SD1. Any reservations? Any no's? Recommendation is adopted. For SB 791, chair's recommendation is to pass with amendments. I'm going to note the blank appropriation. In the committee report, we're going to note the $1.6 million cost for Department of Health and also an annual cost of living increase. Any comments, questions, and concerns? Seeing none, vice chair for the vote. Okay, Senate Bill 791, SD1. Any reservations? Any no's? Recommendation is adopted. For SB 842, Chair's recommendation is to pass with amendments, um, blank out the appropriation, add a definition of low income as those uninsured immigrants earning 150% of federal poverty level, and otherwise add a defect date. I'm going to note in the community in the committee report that the introducer merely requested $1 million, but DHS assumed has estimated it to cost $30 million annually. Any comments, questions, concerns? Seeing none, Vice Chair for the vote. Yeah, Senate Bill 842, uh, SD1. Any reservations? Any no's? No vote. Okay, thank you very much. Recommendation is adopted. So for SB 845, Chair's recommendation is to pass with Hawaii Medical Board's Association, Hawaii Medical Association's amendments, uh, a blank add in a blank appropriation and add a defect date and edit section five for consistency, replacing all doctor language with the word practitioner, um, add in language addressing a potential pathway for physician licensure in acupuncture. And we're also going to delete Section two of the reciprocity paragraph, which is the reci reciprocity paragraph. In the committee report, we're going to reflect the Board of Acupuncture's request for a two year delay in implementation to adopt rules. Any comments, questions? Oh, and other and SMA's proposed amendments. Any comments, questions, concerns? Seeing none, Vice Chair for the vote. Okay, Senate Bill 845, SD1. Any reservations? Any no's? Recognition is adopted. For SB 916, um, we're going to defer that. It's problematic at this time. For SB 987, we're going to pass that with amendments and a blank appropriation. Any comments, questions, concerns? Seeing none, Vice Chair for the vote. Okay, Senate Bill 987, SB 1. Any reservations? Any no's? Recognition is adopted. As for SB 1038, Chair's recommendation is to pass with amendments. Um, we're going to put in Department of Human Services proposed amendments um, and apply amendments to all instances in which interactive te telecommunication systems is defined and added a defective date. In the committee report, we're going to put in HMSA's concerns. Any comments, questions? Concerns, seeing none, Vice Chair for the vote. Okay, Senate Bill 1038, recommendation of the chairs to pass as SD1. Okay. Any reservations? Any no's? Recommendation is adopted. For SB 1379, we're just going to amend the implementation of Act 212 for another two years. Excuse me. 1369. Okay. Um, other than that, any comments, questions, concerns? Seeing none, Vice Chair for the vote. Okay, Senate Bill 1369, recommendation of the chair is passed as a SD1. Okay, any reservations? Any no's? Recommendation is adopted. Okay, for SB 1370, we're going to pass with Department of Health's proposed amendments and, and tech amendments as required by SMA. Any comments, questions, concerns? Seeing none, Vice Chair for the vote. Okay, Senate Bill 1370, uh, SD1, any reservations? Any no's? Recommendation is adopted. For SB 1371, we're just going to pass with tech amendments and a defect date. Um, we're going to note in the committee report Department of Health's concerns that $100 fee is pretty high, but it also means funding other special funds. Any comments, questions, concerns? Seeing none, Vice Chair for the vote. Okay, SB 1371, recommendation of the Church to pass with amendments 
Any reservations? Any no's? No. Thank you very much. Recommendation is adopted. For SB 1378, Chair's recommendation to just pass with amendments. Tech amendments, any comments, questions, concerns? Vice Chair for the vote. Uh, Senate Bill 1378, recommendation of the Chair to pass with amendments. Okay. Any reservations? Any no's? Recommendation is adopted. For SB 1446, we're going to defer in lieu of a sunrise analysis. For SB 1340, we're just going to pass with tech amendments. Any comments, questions, concerns? Seeing none, Vice Chair for the vote. Uh, Senate Bill 1340, recommendation of the Chair to pass as SD1. Okay, any reservations? Any no's? Okay, for SB. Recommendation is adopted. Oh, thank you. As for SB 1372, Chair's recommendation is to pass with tech amendments. Any comments, questions, concerns? Seeing none, Vice Chair for the vote. Yeah, SB 1372, SD1. Okay, any reservations? Any no's? Recommendation is adopted. For SB 1373, Chair's recommendation is to pass with tech amendments and a defect date. Any comments, questions, concerns? Seeing on Vice Chair for the vote. Okay, SB 1373, SD1. Okay, any reservations? Any no's? Recommendation is adopted. We are adjourned. Thank you, folks.